Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell is generating buzz is one of the potential blockbusters of the holiday season. Level design is one of the key elements of the game development process and part of what makes for engrossing gameplay. The first step in level design uh, creation is to have the artists uh, create a huge bank of models. We wanted to have uh, as many objects as possible before even thinking of, uh, about how the maps would look. Then we created each map's base on what's uh, written in the scenario. We wanted to have a very clear uh, idea of the environment and uh, what the gameplay would be uh, before going on to the 3D stuff. Generally, we, uh, the atmosphere we wanted to create in each map was uh, danger. The objective of uh, great level design isn't to make maps that would confuse a player like a maze. Instead, we wanted to make uh, the player feel powerful. Uh, that means uh, giving them uh, a cool character to, to play with and uh, the right weapon to use, but also um, giving them the right environment to be part of. Unlike other games in Splinter Cell, we wanted to, uh, the shadow to be a safe territory for the player and bright areas to be the dangerous territory. With smaller environments, uh, we could make the gameplay much more intense, put the player much closer to the enemies, and it let Sam Fisher interact with the, the light and shadow much more effectively. The idea was to make uh, a fully interactive environment, make it possible to shoot a computer, take a soda can, and to uh, distract an enemies. Um, but much more importantly, to shoot out lights. Shooting lights allow for a different gameplay experience depending on uh, basically how you play. That was the ultimate goal, and um, well, we made it happen.